want to hear from Jensen, but I just wanted to take a moment while I have a few seconds and just appreciate you uh, for who you are. Uh, I've not known Jansen maybe as long as some of you have, but I feel like in Jansen I've met a, a long lost brother. It's amazing when we get to chat uh, the similarities that we have around around Tucson. He's known as the guy who will forever be somewhere in his 30s. So us uh, young short people have to stick together. And uh, in Jansen, uh, I have a a, a soul brother that uh, I can uh, stick around uh, with. But I. My last comment about Jansen, if I could say a lot more, is that Jansen is one of Tucson's greatest resources. And I would say that, and I have said that, not being here, that there are few uh, individuals I have met in this city that have the philosophy and the work ethic and the ability to truly be impactful in a sustainable way. Uh, and so let's give this gift a, a big round of applause. Jansen, will you come and share a few words with us? achievement. Um, you know, um, so much in our culture, we, we glorify achievement. We, we see success of people as individual achievement. But see, at a higher ground, the reason why we're able to do what we're doing is not because of what we're able to achieve. It's because of the contributions of the different people and different partners in our lives. See, today that's who we honor. We wanted to honor, from a micro level, the people. You know, every single one who's contributed to what we're doing. And in a bigger sense, I wanted to show everybody that we can also do it as an organization. See, higher ground success is not just higher ground success. It's United Way success. United Way success is not just United Way success. It's the USD success. That success is not just the school district success, but it's all of Tucson's success. And what I want to speak to today is that whole collective impact approach where we need to start looking at things differently. Instead of looking at individual achievement, let's start looking at collective impact. At what each and every one of us is doing together. Because I love what they said in that video. You all can make a difference. Every single one of us here can make a difference. And um, you know, one of the craziest things, if you guys noticed in the first video of, of the kids, I love that video because every, you know, when people ask me, how did you come up with this whole idea of higher ground? When you go to higher ground, there's several things you'll notice right away. You know, a lot of people tell me, oh, we have a problem with parent involvement. Well, we never had that problem. If you look at our entire front desk, it's ran by parents. You know, our parents run the front desk, they do our files and everything, they're volunteers. Um, and our kids, um, when you go in there, we don't even have what we call peer mentoring. 
You know, it's not peer mentoring. We call it peer mentoring. You see our high schoolers mentoring our middle schoolers, our middle schoolers mentoring our elementary students, and then we have our U of A students who kind of mentor everybody and then the rest of the adults. And when people ask me, where did you come up with that idea? You know, it goes back to what I'm saying. It's not about individual achievement. It's about everybody playing a piece. See, the first person in that video, John Paul, he's really the reason why we started our high schoolers mentoring. Um, his story, I'll give you a little bit of details, is when he first came to higher ground, his very first day, he was a wrestler, um, and I'm a jiu-jitsu coach. He comes in, and as you can tell, I'm a little scrawny guy, angry, and he's like, I'm gonna take you down. And I'm like, go ahead. And about 15 seconds later, I had him tapping out. And you know, and he got so mad, so angry, he threw his, his shirt down, and he's like, I'm gonna beat you up. And I said, why don't you stay, and I'll teach you how to beat me up. And he kind of just had this look in his face, like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> and I'm like, okay. And slowly, we started mentoring and teaching him. After his first year at Higher Ground at Choya, he got straight A's. You know, we thought we were doing great. Oh, we really thought we were doing great. His second year, um, he was still doing good in school. He's becoming a leader. And we're like, wow, you know, this is really cool. And then around Christmas time, he decides to go home. And right away, we get a call from him saying that he doesn't want to come back to Tucson because he feels like since he's at a place where he's straight A's, he can do it. He can go back to California, where he was involved in gangs and drugs, and he'll be fine. We didn't know what to do. We were lost. Obviously, jiu-jitsu is no longer enough for him. So, we kind of brainstorm a little bit. This is where, once again, collective impact comes in. We called Grandma, who was in California. And we asked Grandma, how do you feel about his decision? And Grandma cried on the phone and said, please find a way to take him back to Tucson. Well, you obviously can't threaten a child or kidnap a child. That's what I would have done. <laughs> we, we had to figure out a different way. And finally, I called him and I said, John, how would you like to teach other kids here how to get out of what you got out of? And he was like, I can do that. I'm like, sure, why not? I think they'll listen to you. I don't think your work in Tucson is done yet. And all of a sudden, he was like, wait, my work? Yeah, your work. See, sometimes we get caught up in the idea that we're solving problems for the children. See, they're not part of the problem. They're part of the solution. We are not the solvers ourselves. We're also just part of the solution. And so when we gave them that power and said, look, you can solve this yourself as well. This is part of the work. He decided to come back. He came back, he wasn't happy with me. He wanted to punch me. For a good two weeks, he didn't want to talk to me. <laughs> but he started mentoring other kids, and now he's the first in his family to graduate high school, he's in college, and he wants to do social work because he wants to help other people. See, the other girl in that story, um, Mackenzie, it's the first middle schooler that we started mentoring in. So we started with the high school, they were mentoring. It was great. But then Mackenzie, we couldn't really get her to buy a dance. She didn't like it. She didn't want to do jujitsu. She didn't want to do anything. She was failing in school. So we as a team were like, what do we do? My wife came with a, with a crazy idea. It's like, why don't we treat her like a high schooler? I'm like, what? The kid is failing. Why are we going to reward that? You know, I'm just like, no. But my wife's like, no, let, let's treat her like a high schooler. Let's give her a job. And then in return, let's tell her, we'll give you a job, but you need to maintain a certain grade. She's very social. So we decided to put her in the front desk, gave her responsibility. And in about two weeks, we met with the school. The school was like, we don't know what they're doing, but all of a sudden, she's acting different. And we're like, well, maybe we're on to something. At the end of the year, she got A's and 1B. And by the end of that year, we had about 10 other middle schoolers who were in the same time path. Well, this year, all our middle schoolers are doing the same thing. And you know, it's so funny, the last video you see Ozzy, um, and he says it. The most powerful thing for them is not the jiu-jitsu, the dance, or all that. That's all part of it. But the most powerful for, thing for him is that when he comes to higher ground, 
There's a student that's saying, can you please help me? Can you help me? Can you help me? Can you help me? And when you hear his story, you know, this is one of the students we work with with TUSD, with Hollinger. When you hear his story, you will not believe that he's capable of doing it. You know, he was angry. He was cussing out at teachers all the time. But again, this is where it's not higher ground to make this successful. Without, um, without the staff at Hollinger, the principal, Mr. Lambert, with Maricela Campillo, who was willing to buy into our ideas and say, you know what? Let's do something different. And they were willing to take that chance and contribute. That's why at higher ground, we were able to do what we're doing with and it changed his life. Not only his life, what I included in the video, but his mom's life and his entire family's life. And see, that's what I want to talk about today. Is that we all can make a difference. Every single one of us, whether we are kids, whether we are adults, no matter who we are, no matter what role we play, everybody is just as important as each person. See, I think our culture has sometimes lost itself in celebrity worship. We worship celebrities so much. And yet, these people are just as broken or as amazing as we are. You know, I kind of tend to look at community work as a big puzzle, a thousand piece puzzle. You know, every single piece of that puzzle is just as important as each other. Even the smallest piece if that weren't there, it wouldn't form the picture. No piece of the puzzle is more important than the other. Granted, we may have strategies that will make the puzzle a lot easier. Going to the edges first, doing those things. There are certain people in the community that will make it more strategic to start off with. But at the end of the day, in this room, I have leaders in the community. I have teachers, I have custodians, I have parents, I have students, I have jiu-jitsu coaches, I have dance teachers. At the end of the day, every single piece of that puzzle is as important as each other. See, our success is your success. Our achievement is Tucson's achievement. And we would not be here without every single one of you making a difference in everybody's life. And I want to thank you for coming out and supporting Iron Thank you so much.